Hello YouTube, welcome back to another episode of Yamakara's Let's Play Tutorial Learning How to Play Factorio Series. Uh, right now we're on episode 8, and uh, we are going to be getting our next tier of science up and running, our utility science packs. Um, I've been handcrafting a couple labs off camera for about 13 seconds, um, and we are going to make our science go a bit faster. We have more buffered, we're just not using it, so we're going to utilize our resources just a bit better here. Put you there, like that. Might as well use it if we have it. Grab those two there. So we have an interesting problem. This doesn't quite... Doesn't quite work. It just needs to be a bit more like that. Um... It is in RoboPort area, so I don't actually need to place these down. The bots will place them for me, which is fantastic. I'm going to take some of that out, dump these into the lab. Make some more of those. This is where the tool belt upgrade is nice because you actually have inventory space to put stuff down. You'll notice I picked up a lot of... I dumped a lot of garbage on the ground when I didn't have enough inventory space for everything. A uh, neat feature that happens when you do that is it actually doesn't it doesn't uh, go on the belts. So if you were to drop items on the ground for some reason, let's see, uh, hmm, what's a good way of doing this? It's easy if you have power armor on. I don't have any power armor. I don't have any extra inventory spaces. Let's queue up a whole bunch of builds. Like that, and we'll pick up a bunch of stuff. Try and fill up our inventory here quickly. And then we're going to unqueue the builds. So we're going to fill our inventory up, just for science here. So right now my inventory is super full. If I offload these items... If I stop building these... Items get thrown on the ground. But notice it actually didn't go on the belts. It goes everywhere except for the belts, which is really nice because you don't have stuff going into the wrong areas. In version 17, you used to have all the items get thrown onto the belts, and then you'd have massive issues with items just everywhere because of how the belts were set up. But now you don't get that problem anymore. So that is nice. That can go there, that goes there, and then that goes there. It's just not quite getting red. If that goes like that, it should get the red. And then we'll carry it on down here too. Good. Uh, we will pick up all these items. I'll continue building some more Tech 2 assemblers because you always need those. All of the ones that we can build. And we do have the logistics garbage slots, which are totally jam-packed full right now. It's actually kind of funny. That's very typical of me to have my inventory totally full. Blue science is backing up nicely on me. We might stop this for now. Um, it's a lot of construction robots. That's uh, more than I thought we were going to need anytime soon. Um... Probably should have stopped that a lot sooner, but I did not, so that's okay. That's one reason why you might want to do some circuit circuit wizardry to make sure you don't have a uh, hundred thousand robots using all your flying robot frames, which are very expensive items, mind you. Um, okay, so flying robot frames are building. I'm gonna make some more logistic spots when we get a moment. Which use red chips for that. But first off, we're gonna start making our yellow science. Get ready for that rocket launch. So yellow requires blue chips, flying robot frames, and low density structure. Low density structure, very expensive item. It is going to murder all your resources. If you thought you had enough resources, wait till you start making low density structure. Now you have none left. Congratulations. Just gonna grab all that. Um, I don't have any steel. Empty that out of my inventory. 
Could make a storage chest and dump some items in there as well. It's always a decent way of getting rid of stuff. Uh, we'll keep that. I don't need the solid fuel. I don't need... Power lines are actually really good to have in the network, so... Good for that. Have some walls. Have some motors. Um, you can also delete these blueprints. You could save them and put them into your blueprint book, but we don't need these for right now. Good. Train tracks I could also dump into the assembler there, but... Can't win them all. Now you notice my steel is not keeping up whatsoever. Don't worry, we only need about a million more steel to make this next science here. So we're going to make these guys. Notice the recipe for that is two steel bars, five plastic plates, and 20 copper. So here's your big copper sink. The biggest copper sink, I think, actually. Gonna grab our copper line. Need about uh, 1300 of the science in order to get to your rocket launch. Something like that, if I'm not mistaken. Could be wrong with that, but you don't need a ton of yellow science. You don't need thousands and thousands of it. At least to get to your first rocket launch. If you're gonna start mega basing, then yes, you need a lot of it, but. Initially, you don't need a ton of it. You can have those inserters. So this is where productivity modules really are nice because you're using so much resources that anytime you get an extra bang for your buck, it's uh, very beneficial. Very beneficial. You'll notice that some items can't get productivity modules. Not everything can get it, so I can't put it in here um, because it's an end recipe. Also can't put it on this because of the end recipe as well. So you can only put it in component parts like iron sticks. Furnaces is an end recipe, so you also can't put it on that. And component parts being parts used to make end products. If that makes sense. So all the parts used to make the fern or to make the train tracks are component parts. Um, this is a component part for another item, so that's why you can put it in there. You also couldn't put it into belts. But you could put it into the gears. So, just a heads up on what you can and cannot module. Um, you could put speed modules into that, but you cannot put productivity modules in it. Everything can get speed, but not everything can get productivity. Is how moduling works. I believe everything can get efficiency as well. Doesn't matter what it is, it can get efficiency modules. Not a thousand percent sure on that, but I'm pretty sure. Now we're going to bring our plastic over because we need this also for our low density structure. We're a little bit off of our main bus line, so we'll just run it up back here. Nobody will notice it's not on the bus. Or maybe they will. And one more. Grab some reds. So again, we can get the robots to place it for us. I believe this is in the network. That's good. Good to go right there. And then we need to offload. Just like that. So now we have part one of our yellow science. Beacons are teching right now as we speak. Beacons are quite beautiful. And there we go. Part one done. Uh, we will offload this onto the front side only. And then we need blue chips. Blue chips are the real... Uh, the real nuisance of this build. Oh, I was going to uh, add another RoboPort, but it looks like I'm definitely in RoboPort range here. Easy. That goes like that. Okay. Stage one. Done. Flying robot frames is also already automated. So we'll just grab our flying robot frames from over here. Which are being chested right now. I think I'm going to use most of those for logistics bots right now quickly. 
before we never have flying robot frames again. Grab those. It'll just be nice to have a few more logistics bots hanging around. We do not need any more construction robots. For now. For now. That goes there, and then we need to make blue chips. Blue chips are fun. Blue chips have a liquid input. Not too many uh, items have a liquid input like this. This is the new way I've been setting up my blue chip production lately. And having your line right there. Just need to run our sulfuric acid here. No more pipes. Our sulfuric acid's up on the top. Everything's very uh, neatly organized, even though it's kind of a mess, starting to become a mess. It's still fairly organized. It's easy to set up and add more to. Our pipes are over here somewhere. Again, we could get the bots to build stuff for us, but this is not too bad to do on our own. Sulfuric acid is right here. We have a chest of it right there as well. So we need to connect it up into that line. So we will steal an input right there. There we go. Connect like that. Now we have sulfuric acid. Uh, now we need red chips and green chips. So you know those green chips that we never had enough of to begin with? Now we have even less. Much less. Put the red chips on a long arm inserter. This is also very, very slow craft. And the green chips up front. And the bots will build everything for us here. Can add another robo port. Give ourselves a little bit more range here. So green is actually not horrible right now. But our red chips are pretty bad. Now, one thing I'm a pretty big fan of doing before I upscale things a lot is making sure I just have it working. So we get it working first, and then we can add to it. But if it's not working, it's you could add to it, but you kind of slow yourself down, I feel like. This allows me to buffer everything and have more being accumulated as I go. As opposed to trying to add more red chips right now, and then waiting around for the red chips to be, get built, and then i got to build this setup again, and then, yeah. <clears throat> so building it like this building everything out basic very small amounts of it and then going from there I feel is the way to do things now we're just going to rip up these trees quickly could use the uh, filter deconstruction planner but this works as well now we need to connect our blue And then we have yellow science automated already. Um, really not that difficult. It's just a lot of different things. And then you notice that all your resources start to run out. Especially green chips. Green chips are used so much. So many green chips. You literally can never have enough green chips. So that's there. And we're also going to productivity module this. They're basic productivity modules. But in order to get the next tech... The tech two and the tech three productivity modules, we need uh, blue chips, which are now building. And our bots are doing work for us, which is beautiful. Then we can do that. And now we have yellow science. So now we actually have every single science automated. Um, I can go look at my save time. I can actually type with the tilde key and then type time. We've been playing for five hours and 10 minutes. So there's actually an achievement for uh, going sub eight hours, having your rocket launch. We might actually make it in this playthrough, which is actually kind of 
<clears throat> kind of comical, but good at the same time. I have a bunch of train tracks on me. I do know that. We'll do that. Dump all our train tracks out. Good to go. They'll finish building right there with the belts. We messed that up when we were kind of messing around with things earlier. And now we're going to add more red chips. Red's just not keeping up. And we can quickly run up the line on a bus line. It's really easy to see what the problem is. The problem here is it's just too slow. There's no other problem other than it's just too slow. So, what do you more? I do automate uh, assemblers somewhere. Where? I don't know. I thought I did anyways. Here, assembler, assembler. I really thought I did. I'm pretty sure I do somewhere. I just can't find it. Oh, it's right there. As you give up hope, it pops up in your face. Uh, what do we need for more of these? Steel. So now that steel that you were theoretically buffering. Hopefully had enough of it because now we don't have enough. It's just 400 steel sitting in that chest. That is, that is, is a little bit, but that is not enough. We need more. I'm going to make a couple more rubble parts and we're going to stamp down some more blueprints here. For, uh, smelting. So our yellow is automated, but it's just super slow. Because the blue chips need to build, and they're very slow. And then if the blue chips are slow, then the red chips are slow. And then, yeah, everything's slow. Give me those back. Give me those back. Tanks are finished. Uh, we could do worker robot speed. It's not very expensive. It's only 50. It'll make our robots go... Zoom, zoom, zoom. Uh, maybe we'll do modular armor next after that. As we tech across here. But now look at my iron. Wow. Everything is dying. What has happened here? I just don't make enough of anything. Stone brick. Not enough anything anymore. So these are all going. We can run all the way to the line in C2. So it's just a mi little bit missing right up there. We'll grab our upgrade planner. <clears throat> upgrade that line there. Just so we can snag a few more resources out of that line. And we have robo ports on us. Place that guy right there. And this is where it gets so beautiful to have robots. Boom. Robots will build it. If you start getting some interesting, complicated setups, like you have a pipe in the way, you can manually intervene and kind of fix those problems. But uh, <clears throat> for the most part, just get the bots to place pretty much everything for you. And I don't even need to have anything on me, and the bots will just do everything for me. So nice. We'll remove that rock for me. There we go. We added a few more. Not a ton more, but any more is more. And that can go there. Uh, yeah, we just need more smelting. More smelting. <clears throat> and now the bots are going to build all that up there. So control V does your last blueprint. And if you hold shift and scroll... It will cycle through the ones that you've used. So control C to copy, control V to do your last blueprint, and then hold shift and scroll mouse wheel, and you can find your last blueprints. Even if you don't save it as a blueprint, you can still find the blueprints, which is very nice as well. A lot of really, really nice creature comforts they put into the game. Our copper is fine right now. There's no issue with copper. Looks like it's iron right now is a problem. 
Put some more mining drills too. So now we're upscaling all of our smelting. Everything is going full tilt here. Some more of those. And now we look at the lines and make sure that there's no problem as a problem as in they can't grab their resources. So right here is a problem. There's not enough iron going up there. So we're going to upgrade planner that. <clears throat> so we might have made this new section here, but they're actually not able to get any resource anyways. It doesn't really help that I did that. Hmm. That guy will never get fuel. You go there. So we need more mining drills. Drop an upgrade planner again. Then we're slowly mining the whole planet away. Place that there, and then another upgrade planner on top of that. Nineteen K I think is enough iron to mine out. Make it worth their while. About half of that node totally utilized now. Beautiful. My phone is apparently blowing up. Okay. More iron. Uh how's our steel though? So we built this to stack inserter. Stack inserter is pretty nice as it'll let all the resource get pushed out there. But uh, we are just still way too low on everything. Steel's too low. Um, let's look, expand the steel smeltery then too. So we shall grab this. We can actually grab the entire array like that. Hold shift to place it down. Gonna go right there. I'm gonna right click to remove those and then place a new section down. Power armor's finished. Uh, now we gotta start teching the stuff towards our rocket silo. So we only have a few techs left. We have speed module two, speed module three, proactivity module, and rocket control unit. That's another item that uses all of your resources. And, oh, and concrete. Concrete's pretty simple, no big problem there. So we'll go get concrete out of the way. Um, maybe we'll do speed module, and then we can do speed module three, and then proactivity module, rocket control unit. By that point, we should have I don't know if we'll have 300, but we'll definitely have a few of those, and then we can do the rocket silo. So the actual amount of yellow science you need before you can launch a rocket is actually 1,200, I think, with productivity modules, something like that, around the 1,200 mark. And then you can get your rocket up. But you won't get your space science, though, because you're not building a satellite. But you will be able to throw that rocket up in space, which is kind of half the battle, I guess, if you're trying to get that achievement. Swap this around. So now we're adding more steel as well right now. This is going to insert on the top side. This will insert on that side. And now both sides will be... Both sides will have steel on it. Beautiful. Put you to there, you to there, you to there. And look at those bots go. So now they see a hundred of them charging. That just means there's not enough charging ports, which is okay because they're only going to temporarily be here. So there's no point really flaring all this up and putting a thousand robot ports because the bots won't constantly be coming here. They'll come here a bit, but they won't always be coming here. It's not a, a place they're going to hang out all the time. So if you have a big logistics zone, 
where you have logistics bots hanging out all the time, or for some reason you have construction bots always going in the same area, then you might want to add a bunch of roboports. But for my sake, this area is going to get set up once and then nobody will ever be here again. Construction bots anyways. It'll be set up and then they'll set and forget. I can hover over here and see if I'm missing anything. So we're missing steel furnaces and a blue belt. So somewhere here I'm upgrading a belt to a blue belt. Right there, actually. So you can grab the upgrade planner, you can hover over it, and then go shift click to cancel the build. And there we go. More stuff building. More iron smelting. We actually have a fully saturated line here too. So upgrade that. We need all the iron we can get. So that's good. How's our red chips looking? They're still pretty sad. Sad, sad red chips. So maybe we'll make more red chips on the side over here. Where would be a good spot for that? We're going to need triple output lines going up. Maybe we'll make them right above here. We need copper. We need green chips. You pull the copper off that line. Sometimes I find it annoying that I don't have any resources on me because I can't build myself. But then you just get the bots to build it. So, is it really, is it really annoying? I don't know. Maybe I'm missing that instant gratification that I can't build it myself. I still build plenty myself, though. I think. Just build a whole bunch of those. I'm looking for red chips here. The red chip supply is a uh, lackluster. 100. And then we're building gears, so we'll build enough. We'll have enough to get this going. Grab some belts so I can build on my own. Maybe even expand this out. And then we can actually check on our yellow science and see how many they've actually built. Uh, if we look, they've actually built none because they have no long arm inserters. And that's okay. So it almost works, but you just hover over the building quickly and see, uh, no one's built anything. Cool. Cool. But now they're building. We need 1,200 of it to build. And uh, we are going to go over here. We're going to go look at our red chip design for a second. And we're going to copy it. Easy. You can actually just copy a tiny section of it. Copy just that. And that's exactly what we want to build. So we have our copper on that side. This convenience or inconvenient cliff right there. And we just paste those down like that. And now we know exactly where we want to build it anyways. The bots won't start building this yet because we're missing pretty much everything, I think. They're also not in range. Then we got to connect our inputs. And now you see why bots are so amazing. So if you were a, uh, a doubter of the bots... I believe after this playthrough video, you should uh, be a believer. I uh, played probably a good 500 hours of Factorio before I actually ever ended up using bots, which uh, makes me kind of sad to this day. Because bots are just so good. I think I enjoyed the botless experience, but the bots definitely add uh, longevity to the game. So where there's some things you don't want to repeat building over again. Like, do I want to have to redesign everything every single time? I don't mind with the furnaces. I don't mind with stuff like that. But once you start flaring your design up and making thousands more and really making your designs a lot bigger, it's so nice having the bots. You can just grab a blueprint like this. It's not perfect, this blueprint. It's okay. But we did make it. It is ours. And they just speed things up so much. Just, I just don't know how good this game would be without bots. I'm just torn. I feel like they just made the game so much better. Again, I have this delicious coffee sitting right next to me. 
And now I can hover over here and see exactly how many I'm missing. I'm missing nine and five. And I could just place the chest down here and then put them all in there. And the bots will go grab them. There you go. There you go, bots. Don't say I never did nothing for you. They're nine, five, and yeah, so now they have none missing. They're going to start making our red chips for us. And we can go run these red chips into our next setup. So this guy needs red right there, and it pretty much has none. Furnaces actually here need red as well. They aren't getting any. Red is... Red becomes one of the big problems in your playthrough. Red and steel. Just never can have enough. So the base is getting a little bit messy, but at the same time we are building everything we need to build for a rocket, which is crazy. Five hours in. Everything is teching already. We just need to get that uh, 1200 science built, give or take. And uh, we are pretty much good to go there. Our power is now starting to fail again. As we start adding all the modules and beacons, um, you notice your power usage starts spiking a lot. So if we go to P, actually not P, if you click on the power grid here and you look at our usage, over the period of the last hour and a half, we've almost doubled our power usage. So we were pretty low for the first four hours, but now as we start putting modules in buildings, our power, and ev as everything starts running, our power is just getting deleted, which is fine. We have no issues with that whatsoever. Our light oil is okay here. How's our petroleum doing? We actually have too much petroleum. So we're going to add some chemical plants and start pulling the petroleum into solid fuel. But I am going to add a circuit again, the same way we did with the other one, and not allow it to make solid fuel unless I have over 5,000 sitting in this chest. The reason for that is the plastic is more important than solid fuel. Is it really? I'm actually not sure on that statement. But I feel like I would rather make solid fuel out of other things, which is actually better out of light oil, than using my petroleum for that. So right here, we're gonna make some solid fuel with our excess petroleum. And again, it's not its own little network here. We don't want it pulling from the other side of the factory. We'll just push it over one. These buildings can all actually be right next to each other. Just run the pipe right there, super easy. And if you needed more refining, you could do that still at this point. Oil is not technically an unlimited resource. You can keep pulling oil forever and ever and ever. The only issue with oil pulling forever is eventually it starts getting slower. So you don't actually run out of it. It just becomes less and less and less. I think it only goes to a point, though. And then stops it kind of depleting on itself. I'm going to run this right over to there, like that. Another thing you will notice is bots also use a lot of power. When bots are working, they pull quite a decent amount of power. So another thing to take into consideration when you start making a thousand bots. If your power grid is uh, sketchy, you might be making it worse by adding bots to it. Some more chemical plants and pull the rest of this petroleum. There's too much. Uh, and we can just make more oil refineries too. Because our crude oil, the storage tanks there look actually completely full. And to build more of these, we need iron, steel, electronic circuits. Probably pipes too. It's actually almost everything here except for electronic circuits we don't have. Um, you do need a ton of rock, a solid fuel for rocket fuel. That's another thing you want to take into consideration is um, your oil is going to have to get upscaled a lot for your rocket fuel. It's uh, it's quite expensive. 
You used to have to use rocket fuel for your science, I believe, for yellow science needed it. Um, they rebalanced all the recipes in version 18, 17? I don't know, one of those versions. And they really, uh, really made it a lot better. The devs for this game, if you are not aware, are some of the most dedicated to the cause devs, devs that I think uh, you'll ever run into. And it's so nice to see the game finally release into 1.0. Okay, there we go. Now we got solid fuel. Is it enough? I think it probably is. We're going to do this instead. So these solid fuel are going to be going to the furnaces only. And these ones here will be providing for all our steam engines. And how many do we have here? 38. We can actually build one more. We're one off. Is that correct? Yep, we're definitely one off. One off of having a full setup here. It's kind of funny. Now we want to maybe bear note of our pollution, which is spreading quite rapidly. Um, biters have moved up over there in the world. They are expanding. Um, yeah, we might have to worry about our defense on the side here. Might become a problem at some point. Uh, we do have the tank teched. So maybe next playthrough setting edition Factorio tutorial series, we will uh, show some basic fighting styles in Factorio of how to uh, eradicate the biter menace. But for now, we're just kind of expanding everything and making sure everything is working nicely. And copper is... trucking along here. Looks like we need more... copper mining, but I actually don't have any more copper here. So there's nothing I can do with that. That is the entire deposit. Next thing we have to do is outpost. It's not really outposting because we can just belt to that. You could train it, but in this tutorial video, I don't actually want to train it. And if we do want to launch under eight hours, setting up a rail infrastructure probably isn't in your best interest. Um, you can do it, but it's uh, generally a little bit slow to set all that up. Let's go see how much yellow science we actually produced. If we check over the period of all, you can see how much you've uh, produced and how much you've eaten, consumed. So we have 156. We're... 20% there to our rocket silo, actually, which is kind of crazy. Um, production science is going as well. These guys here. So we only actually have 14 labs working right now. So we can definitely expand on that. Um, you can just be normal inserter there. With our belt weaving extravaganza here. I always wonder to myself and sigh deeply as I set up. Setups like this. Why I do this to myself? Why yams do you do this to yourself? Belt weaving is nice, but at the same time it's like. A lot. You can really make your simple base very complicated. It's uh, it's a thing. <laughs> I often do things like this to myself. Why? I don't know. More fun that way, maybe. Will a red make this gap? Oh, it will. So we can add those two there. We'll get some more labs up and running here. These don't have any productivities yet. Waiting on some power lines here. Uh, I have no idea why I just grabbed that. Sometimes we just do things. Does it make sense? No. But uh, that's what happens when you play a game for a hundred thousand hours. So we're going to finish that setup over there. We'll look at our red chip production. 
over the period of one hour, if we scroll down to our red chips, we uh, spiked it up. So we were going at, I don't know, 67, and now we're making 143. So we flared the red chips up quite nicely. Looks like green chips aren't keeping up anymore. Something had to fail. Something had to fail. The dogs are going crazy. It's always fun. Now is the point where you could start beaconing everything. Because if you look at this setup here, this might slow down a lot, but we're not getting enough copper anyways. So even if it slowed down a ton, it doesn't really hurt you that much because it wasn't getting there anyways. So if we slow them all down, but more buildings are producing, technically it's better. And here we'll put in some there. Not all of our labs are working, so we don't need all of them going. That goes there. Oh, look at that. Now we got one, two, three, four, 28 labs working or something like that. On these ones here as well, we can start putting productivity modules in it. But then we will notice the power will start getting pulled even more. And now all these are working. They're individually slower, but collectively more of them are working, so it is better. Yellow is producing. Blue chips are producing. Engines are building forever. Mm, that might be a mistake, in all honesty. Yeah, it's almost full. It's almost full. Go over here. We can add some productivity on this guy as well. You can just click and hover over and drop it like that. You don't have to, by control clicking, you don't have to click into the building. But if you do want to change it, you do need to click into the building. So now these are just a bit too slow. So maybe we'll do this. We'll take one of them out. They're building. They're just a bit too slow. And then we can do the same thing over here. Just take one out. Oh, but it looks like these ones are working fine. I don't know why the other ones weren't. What's the difference in the setup there? Oh, these have excess. This is set up properly and the other one isn't. So this here is missing an extra inserter or assembler. They have one and a half per building here, and this only has one per two buildings. So this design here is wrong. This one here is right. Ratio-wise. You can have some more greens. You'd be a bit slower on the green. And uh, yeah. So if we go check our overall, which is we're looking at this beautiful graph a lot on this playthrough. Over the period of one hour. Our green chips should have flared up as well. If I can find them here. Kind of flaring up. Issue when you look at a bar like graph like this is you have a lot of buffers on your belts. So it's hard to tell exactly if you're actually making more... Or you're consuming more versus not. But another way you can check is always looking at the raw ore consumption. So our iron plates have skyrocketed. Our copper cable has skyrocketed. Everything's pretty much skyrocketed. Which is saying that we are eating more of everything. And then over the period of 50 hours. I wish there was a 5 hour. Um, it would be nice to see. But kind of helps like that too. So yeah, we'll stop there I think. And we only have 3 techs left to go to the rocket silo. And in the next video, hopefully, we get teching onto the rocket silo. And we'll start outposting, getting some more resources in so we can uh, make this go a little bit faster and then build our rocket. So we're almost there. Slowly but surely, we are trucking along in our Factorial playthrough. So I want to say thanks for watching. If you liked it, subscribe. Throw a comment in the description. Comment in the comments, I guess, in the description. And uh, until next we meet, this is Yamakar. Ciao for now.